presence and seeing him move and, and being intimate and close to him, hearing his voice. I'm just praying that for this this morning and today. This won't be another church service, but it'll be a time where you sense the presence of God. That he manifests himself, that he moves in such a way that uh, it changes your life forever. Jesus is about life change. And whether you've been saved today or not, you might not have ever been saved. You might not have ever called on Jesus as your Savior. But once he saves you, that's when the life starts changing. But life change continues to happen until we get to the place of glory. We continue to become more like him, growing in him and being like him. So that's what I want today. I want, well, no matter if, we've, if we're lost and we get saved or we've been saved 30 years and we, we need more. I just pray today is a day of life change and encounter. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that everybody here experiences you today. God, that today that the, the waves beneath their feet will be calmed when you say, peace, be still. And no matter what's going on in their lives, God, they'll see you, they'll hear you, they'll know you, and they'll know you're in full control, God, because you do not allow anything uh, to destroy us, Father God. You are for us and not against us, but you are our guard. You guard our hearts, our souls. You are the one who controls the atmosphere around us, God. And we just bless your name for you have plans for us that we don't even know about. You you have things for us, God, that we don't even know about and, and spiritual experiences, Lord, that, that we just long for. So God, give everybody in this room what they need today, Lord. We all need different things, but most of all, we just need you because one look at you will change our lives forever. One one encounter with you will change our lives forever. Lord, give us a, a, a day where we receive, Lord, just that manna from heaven, that daily bread, and be with us during this time. We bless your name. We trust you in everything here today. We give you full reign. And uh, as we always say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. No matter what you're going through, the rock never moves. Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forever. He changes not. Let that be a comfort to you today as we sing. When the ground beneath my feet gives way And I hear the sound of crashing waves All my world is a washing out to sea I'm hidden safe in the God who never moves Holding fast to the promise of the truth That you're holding tighter still to me The rock won't move and his word is strong The rock won't move and his love can be undone The rock won't move and his word is strong the rock won't move and his love can't be undone. The rock of our salvation. My hope, sing it out. Hope is in the promise of your blood, my support within the raging flood, even in the tempest I can see. Yeah, I'm hidden safe in the God who never moves, holding fast to the promise of the truth that you're holding tighter still to me. The rock won't move and his word is strong. The rock won't move and his love can't be undone. The rock won't move and his word is strong. The rock won't move and his love can't be undone. The rock of our salvation. Let's sing this out on Christ. 
On Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground sinking sand The rock won't move No, the rock won't move When darkness seems to hide His face I rest on His unchanging grace The rock won't move no, the rock won't move. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. The rock won't move. No, the rock won't move. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. The rock won't The rock won't move and his love can't be undone. The rock won't move and his word is strong. The rock won't move and his love can't be undone. The rock of our salvation. to give the rock of our salvation some praise this morning we're thankful for jesus and his great name when the book of acts says there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved that's what it means it means only by calling on the name of jesus you will be saved and because you know that that means it's the most precious name the most wonderful name, the most glorious name, the most holy and righteous name, the most beautiful name. It should be that name that when you speak it, that everything comes into clearer vision, that you would be able to see him and know him and understand him and that everything around you would go away in the light of who Christ is and what he has done for us. And that's what we're going to be singing about today. That's what we're preaching about today is the light of Christ, the life of Christ, the salvation of Christ, what he came to do for us and who who he is, the, the, who God is, what God's plan was for all eternity was to save you through the name of Jesus. That's why we worship him. That's why he was given the name above all names, the name that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's why his name is Jesus because that's the only name that really matters. Let's praise him this morning.
changes Oh, and your love for us never changes Oh, we love to worship your name Death could not hold you The veil tore before you You silenced the bones of sin Don't you love the Lord this morning? Aren't you thankful for Jesus this morning? What a wonderful name it is. And I pray that today he does something inside of you to make change, to make a difference. Today we leave here not as we were, but as God would have us to be. He said, come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Well, I know a lot of you have said yes to Jesus. Now you got to say yes to the rest of it. you got to fill up full of the Holy Spirit make way and get out into this world and tell somebody that you know Jesus and how they can know him too. This church has been called to make a difference in this community. This year I believe there's going to be a, a great harvest of souls and lives changed through the efforts that God uses us for in this area. So I'm praying that today not only are we changed but there's a, a no fear like God takes this, these these spirits of fear that are not of God. He takes them away from us. These things things that are dragging us down, these anxieties, these, these troubles that give us just these things that hold us back. And then he puts inside of us the strength of his Holy Spirit and the knowledge and the wisdom. I, sometimes we get so nervous about what we need to say, but I want you to remember what Jesus told the disciples. He said, you go and when you need to say something, I'm going to give you the ability to say it through the power of the Holy Spirit. So you're here, you're ready, you're studying, you're looking into the things of God, you're worshiping, you're saying, yes, Lord. And now you've just got to step out of your comfort zone into the world around you and tell them about Jesus. Tell them about the good news. Show them there is something better than the way they're living and the life they're living. And there is an afterlife, guys. There, there's a heaven There's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun. And we've got to make sure that everybody knows so they don't die and go to hell on our 
watch in this area. I want God to make us brave today. I want you to come in with stories and testimonies of the lives that have been changed through your witness in the world, through the good works that you do, that they may see your good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Let's well up in the Father. Let's grow up in the Father. Let's fill up with the Father. And let's do something great for the glory of God.
washes over me. You are for us. You are not against us. Champion of heaven, you may this morning hallelujah we worship you champion of heaven you are good and your mercy endures forever so make us brave to win the world for your name and may the glory of god be seen in this community and in this church bless everyone here today with the fullness of your spirit and no fear god in the power and the strength and the mind and the courage to go out and do whatever you're calling them to do let people step into their callings and into whatever god you're giving them in their lives to do right now for the kingdom of god and let us all just be right with you, Lord. Save the lost and change the saved. Use us for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Someone before you sit down this morning. Fight of my enemies. And if God did it for me, he'll do the same thing for you. Don't worry about your haters. Your haters can't do nothing with you. Listen to these words. Love is patient, caring love. Is God. Love is felt most. Love is felt most when, when it's genuine. Love is genuine. But I, I had my share, share of, love, of love abuse. Abuse. Manipulated. Manipulated. And his strength. And his strength. Misused. Misused. And I can't help. And I can't help. But to give God glory. glory. When I think about when my story, think oh yeah, y'all, I got a story to tell. My story. And I know, and I know, you favor me, you favor me because, <laughs> because my enemies, my enemies did try. they did try, they try but they couldn't try over me. Over me. Yes, they did yes, try. They did but it didn't work. Over me. I'm still here. I'm still alive. I'm still blessed. On my way to my destiny. Because the favor of God is on my life. Let me tell you about love. Love, love is patient. Love is kind. Is kind. Love, love is felt is most, felt most when, when it's genuine. It's genuine. Are, I had a whole lot of people in my life I've had my share of love, who abused my love. Abuse, they manipulated it, manipulated and, it and took the strength of it and tried to misuse it. But I can't help Great job. But to give God glory today when I, think when I think about all I've been through And I still came out on the winning side and I, know I don't know about you, but I know you That he favored me Because, because my, my enemies, enemies mm, did They did try, they try Sing it, y'all But they couldn't triumph over me yes, Cause great is he that is in me than he that's in the world. That's what they did. That's what they did. They told them. All right. Check, check. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right. Let's go ahead and get started this morning. We're going to pray over these children. And uh, then we are going to get into the book of John this morning on the person of the Father. God, we just bless your name for our children. Uh, for the, the blessings of who they are and what they are, God, and, and for your creation. Lord, we know that every good gift comes down from you. And, 
and that these children are good gifts, God. And even though sometimes they wear us out, Lord Jesus, uh, we know that we wear you out too. And like a good father, you always love us, you help us, you teach us, you forgive us, you work with us and help us to be mothers and fathers to these children just like you father us, God. Bless them, give them what they need today to see you in your fullness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I have to remind myself that, it, that you, it's illegal to sell your children on the black market about once a day. Um, you know, sometimes I'd like to see what I could get for them. But like my father used to say when I was a boy, I wouldn't take anything for you. Uh, you know, I wouldn't take a million dollars for you, but I wouldn't give two cents for another one of you, you know. So, uh, no, I like my kids. They're all right. My kids are all right, I guess, sometimes. But... Um, the per if you're visiting, I'm just joking, and you'll have to get used to that, okay? Because I like to have a good time, and church is really not as serious as you make it. It's, it's actually a whole lot of fun, and God is good, and His mercy endures forever. And uh, you can enjoy every minute of what God has for you in life. Uh, children are one of those blessings that, uh, that we take for granted, for sure. But God has truly blessed us with a lot of children and a lot of good workers, and, and if you see any of our children's workers, any of our children's teachers or anything, make sure you tell them good job, because it, it is a chore to teach kids and work with kids every week. Amen? Any of you school teachers or Sunday school teachers, anybody that's ever done that, you know that. So it's a blessing to have people to work with them also, and uh, everybody who does that, we appreciate that. Last week we began, well, let's say two weeks ago, uh, we began... Uh, well, you know, it's, it's crazy that two weeks lapses if you miss one Sunday. I, I've been missing you. But we began with uh, the, the, the person of God. We, we began um, with 1 John chapter 1. And, and, and if you haven't been here, we are in the Align series. Like we are aligning ourselves with God. We started this on January the 7th, proclaiming a 21-day fast uh, that will end on January the 27th. Um, then... Uh, the 29th, that Monday night, we will start a meeting with Brother Don Pearson, who will be preaching uh, through Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then we will uh, uh, just see, I believe, what God has for us in this new year as He's bringing us into uh, His purposes, uh, His person, and His plan. We talked about His person last time I preached, and it was on light and life, that God is life. God is and, and the only way to align yourself with God is to know Him, number one. Amen? you got to know God, and you got to know about God. You'll never know Him intimately, intimately unless you know something about Him. It's like, just like when you're dating someone, you, you open up your heart to those person, or that person opens up their heart to you, and you begin to understand who they are in order to get to know them better. And God is wanting to know us better. I mean, God, we are wanting to know God better for sure. God already knows everything about us. He knows our insides. He knows our outsides. He knows how we were made. He knows, whom, he, he knows who's, uh, whose desires are what. He knows whose uh, thoughts are what. He knows everything about us. But we don't know God like we should. Amen? Like, we don't understand the fullness of who He is. And, 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 and I'll just tell you personally, in my life, I want to be closer to God. I, I feel like all the time that I'm, I'm, I'm a... I feel like all the time I'm just one step from being where I need to be. And maybe that's the way you feel all of your life. I don't know. But this is how I felt all my Christian life. That I'm, I'm this close to breaking through. I'm this close to... It's like a film between me and God. I'm this close to opening up that film and seeing Him in His fullness. I'm praying that's what this is doing in your life through this fast and through this seeking God. Searching for Him. That this, this veil, this film, these scales on our eyes are being... Uh, pushed away. We understood last week that He was life. He's life. He made you. He formed you. He did everything to bring you to this point. He's not only life, physical life. He's eternal life. He is, he is that which makes you and wants you to be with Him for all eternity. And then we said He is light which meant he is, he is holy. God is holy and He desires for us to be holy but the only way you can truly be holy is to be saved, filled with the Holy Spirit 
and then strive for that to live. There is a, a positional righteousness you are giving through Christ. Christ gives you salvation. And then, then you begin to live that out. And you shun evil. You, you walk away from things you don't need to be a part of. You, you read your Scripture. You love God. And it changes you. And it makes you more like the Father. This week we're going to preach on the purposes of God. Why is God doing all this? Why, what is the overarching theme of everything? In order to know God, in order to be intimate with God, you know, we have to understand His mind. Why, why is He doing what He is doing? Why, is he, why did He do what He did? Why, why is the Old Testament like it is? Why is the New Testament like it is? Uh, why, what, what is He doing right now through prophecy being fulfilled and, and, and through the nation of Israel? And what does the Scripture say about what He is going to do? What is His purposes in all that. Now you're thinking, wow, that's going to be a lot to preach today. No, no. It's, it's very simple actually. It, it, it's, it's very simple. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. These are His purposes. Salvation and sanctification. Salvation and sanctification. Everything comes under those categories. Everything in the Christian walk, everything God's doing has been to save you and then make you more like Himself. Everything He does is to save people and make them more like Himself. Now, we're only going to be on salvation today because sanctification is a whole other subject and will take a whole other sermon. But in John chapter 3, Jesus had come to Jerusalem one night and Nicodemus, a religious leader, one who was a, a part of the, the crowd who thought they knew God, thought they knew why God was doing what He was doing, he came to Him under the, the cloak of darkness and ask him a few questions about what was going on. Verse number one, there was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to, to speak with Jesus, Rabbi. Number one, he didn't understand truly who Jesus was. He said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and of the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going. So you just can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. How are these things possible, Nicodemus said. Jesus replied, You are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things. I assure you, we tell you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me, when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you of heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned. But the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in Him will have eternal life. For God so loved the world so much that He gave His one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent His Son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through Him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in Him, but anyone who does not believe in Him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. Father, in Jesus' name, let us see Your purposes. God, Your purposes are to save us. God, you save us to change us. God, you save us because we can't save ourselves. You save us because we are completely unable and incapable of reaching the throne of God, yet for a sacrifice named Jesus.
God, you're so good to us because you could have left us where we were. You could have left us to ourselves. You could have given us up to reprobate minds. You could have given us up to our own desires and our own thought processes and our own wills, the whims of our flesh, God. But no, You would send Your Son. You would send Your Holy Spirit. And You would dwell with men through the power of the cross, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. You have chose to be with us even though we tried to get away from You. God, we love You. We praise You. We understand today, without You, none of this is possible. Without Your Holy Spirit, nobody in this room can understand. So God, give us understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. Give us the ability to turn from our wicked ways, to trust You as Savior, and to understand what You are trying to do around us and why You want us to be a part of that. Align us with Yourself. Bring us to a place, God, where we hear You and know You like we never have before and let God let this place be a place of sensitive hearts minds souls let ears be open that hearts might be filled let everybody here God be closer to you than they've ever been and at this moment Father God manifest your Holy Spirit and show yourself great that we might leave here in awe of you knowing that your person your purposes and your plans are greater than anything in this world in Jesus name we pray Amen. You must be born again. Nicodemus, even though being a religious man, was struggling to understand the fullness of what that meant. What do you mean I must be born again? What do you mean I'm an old man? I'm I'm an old man. How am I going to go back into my mother's womb and be born again? What are are you talking about? I I know you're a a, a rabbi. I understand that you've come here from God, yet Nicodemus fully didn't understand that he he was a teacher. He was was an expositor of the Scripture. He did explain the things of God as he did to Nicodemus in this passage to many others, but he was so much more than a good teacher. He was so much more than a healer. He he was so much more than, than just this person that stood in the temple and was able to explain things that nobody had understood in their lives. And in order to align ourselves through this process, through this 21 days, we must understand what are the purposes of God? Why did Jesus come? Why did He do what He did? What are the What is the main reason reason? What is God's heart? What is God's mind? What what is God trying to do inside of all of us right now in order for us to understand, in order for people not to go to hell? What has God done? What is God doing? And what will God do? The heart and mind of God are open to you this morning. If you really want to understand. Are you listening to me? If you really want to know God more, you can know more of God. If you really want to experience God more, you can experience more of God. If you want to be more intimate with Him, then you can be. But it is going to take work and effort on our part. God has done His part. God has sent His Holy Spirit. God is working around us. God is doing everything He needs to do in order for us to experience His fullness. But we have to crucify flesh. We have to put our uh, pride and, and our things aside. We have to press into the Scripture and in to prayer and we have to grab hold of the the deeper truths of God in order for them to flood us with the ability to grasp what God is trying to do God's heart there's no way listen there's no way to become intimate with someone if you don't know their heart's desire there's no way for me and Tiffany to be intimate if I do not know what her heart is who who she is how she is made what makes her tick what makes her laugh what may Look, I I need to know what makes her cry also, right? Like that's probably the most important part of that whole situation. I need to know what makes her happy. I, I need to know the, the, what, what makes uh, the inside of her move and yearn towards me. And if I can figure those things out, then I can work on that. Then I can put specific things in specific places. I can make sure that the atmosphere around me and my wife is one that I can know her and she can know me. That's what I'm trying to 
to do with God. I'm trying to put all the puzzle pieces together. Listen, guys, I'm not that smart, all right? I've got a 12th grade education, and when you start speaking in Greek, I have to go find someone who knows how to speak Greek and then let them speak it in English for me to understand the Greek, all right? Like, I, I have to have, here's the puzzle, okay? I need the box beside the puzzle with the picture on it, and then I need to look at the box and the puzzle and go, that's it. That's, it. that's what we're doing in the Word of God. We've got, we've got the puzzle, the mysteries of God, the greatness of God, the fullness of God here. And it's like a big puzzle. And we're going, why, why doesn't this fit here? You've got to see the picture of who He is. You've got to see the Son. You've got to see the part. The Son is the perfect picture of the Father. When you see the Son, you see the Father. So you're trying to get intimate with God here, but you're not looking at the Son. You're not, you're not looking at the One who came to make sure that you can be. You can, you can put the puzzle together if you got the picture on the box, but if you don't have who Christ is, what He came to do, how He is doing, then you're going to look at the puzzle and go, I don't understand why this had to happen. I don't understand why this is going to I don't understand but once you get to the place where you see the whole picture, it makes a difference in your life. What is God's overarching purpose for everything? God's heart is to save people. If this church is not about anything else in the world, it needs to be about people getting saved. Lives being changed. If we have a good time, if we build a building, if we, if we do all the things we feel like God wants us to do, if we have great worship services and, and moving events, if we do all these things, but nobody gets saved, we are wasting our time, our breath, our facilities, our money, our gifts, our talents. We're wasting it all on a good time, yet everybody's still going to hell. Think about why God's purpose is to save people. Number one, verse number 16, For God loved the world so much. You love with your heart. You love with your heart. You, 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 when I, and I have to talk about it in, in, in terms where I can understand it too. Like the, 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 when I knew I loved Tiffany, it wasn't a, a mind thing. I didn't have to talk myself into it. I, I, didn't, I knew that I loved her. I told my mom two weeks after we had married, I said, I mean two weeks after we had uh, started dating, I said, I'm going to marry Tiffany. She said, really? I said, absolutely. I said, God told me. Like, I'm going, like there was inside of me a longing and a desire to be with her that, that I was going, what is this? Who, who is this? this? This person in front of me. This is what my heart has desired. This is the one. And, and, and I think about God, His desire for you. His heart for you. Why well, you ever done anything wrong? Yeah, I knew it before I asked the question. Like, I mean... Have you, and I mean, think about how great God's desire for God loved the world so much. The world. Who is the world? The world is not the saved people. The world is the lost people. So His heart of love, it has to be that the purpose of God has to be to save people because God is loving unlovable people with all of His heart. Like He loved them that much, so much. All His love. Uh, and I don't understand why, because sometimes we are the most unlovable people. Sometimes we are the worst people. But we have the worst attitudes, and we, we have the, the worst feeling. We, and we think about it, we do stuff that's just crazy, but God still loves us. He loves us in our bad state. He loves us in our good state. He loves us in the worst place we've ever been. He loves us in the best place we've ever been. Listen, God's love for you is not based on your performance. It's based on His heart. It's based on His character. It's based on His person. God loved you before you were lovable and so for God's person to align ourselves with God we're going to have to start loving people outside of here like God loves them we're going to have to start looking at people like God looks at them. We're going to have to start looking at our community and we're going to have to start seeing things through the eyes of God. I want to be like my father. I want to be more in tune with God and I want to see my heart. My heart is for the lost people. The, persons, the purpose of God is motivated out of a heart of love. His love is great. He, and, and, and listen, we, we, get into a, uh, we get into some messes sometimes. We think about all these people and all these religions and, and all this stuff. 
stuff and, and the colors, the creeds, the races, the religions, and, and we get thrown back and people do things to hurt us and, and we go through all these cycles of we don't need to be friends with this or that or you know, and, and God's none of that. Do you know that? And God's saying, I love everybody. I love every creed. I love every nation. I love every religion. Now, it doesn't make everybody right. It just means that God loves them. For God so loved the world. The world. What is the world? There's the world of the lost people. And that's the world that we were all in. Why is God, why did God create in Genesis? Why did, why did God prophesy in Isaiah and, and Jeremiah? Why did, why did in Isaiah he starts talking about a lamb uh, slain eh, without spot and blemish? Why did he make all of these things happen? Why did the, the children of Israel come out of, of Egypt? Why did they get to the promised land? Uh, why was Jesus born? Why is the, why was the New Testament written? Why was all this revelation given to us of what's going to happen at the end of the world? Why is all this stuff happening around us? It's happening to save you. It's happening to change you. It's happening that people, people are, people, everybody that's not saved is going to hell. That should be a revelation right there. Did, have you ever thought about that? That you've got people that you've never said a word to about Jesus and they're going to get killed or die and they're going to go to hell. You ever thought about that? Like my kids, I love them. Every one of them will know about Jesus before they die. We pray to Him. We read about Him. We go to church 15 times a week. We sing about Him in our living room. They sing about Him in the car when we turn the radio on. We listen to preaching. We do everything that's possible to make sure our children know who God is. And, and if they don't get saved, it will not be on their parents. It will be on them because the Holy Spirit's work in them is what has to happen. They have to choose personally. But what about all those people around you who are not afforded the same chance? Who do you know right now that you work with every day that you know that you're around every day that you've never spoken a word about Jesus to? Like just if God's purpose is to save all people and you are in the plans of God being the person who is going to make this happen on the world, you are the one who's going to give the gospel. Why aren't we giving the gospel so much that He gave? Now the proof of loving someone, the person of God, to prove that you love someone, then you don't only say it, but you do something for them, right? Is that a true statement? Yeah, like, like if, if John just tells Greta he loves her, but John never does anything for Greta, sooner or later, Greta's going to say, put your money where your mouth is. And she's good at saying things like that. I mean, that's, that's her ability. She just speaks what's on her mind, you know. But sooner or later, talk's cheap. Amen? Hey, you've been there. You've got people that promise a whole bunch of stuff, but never come through with nothing. Now, the person of God's exact opposite. God has not the ability to lie. That's what Titus says. He, he, he is not able to lie. He is not able to, to, to tell you something, to promise you something, and not fulfill it. So, God says He loves you, but since you were condemned from birth by your sin, just God saying, I love you, is not enough. Right? I can love you all the way to hell. I have seen women get beat up by men and then go back to them because they say, I love you. You think about this. Words don't mean anything unless there's a heart of action behind it. Unless there's something that proves what you're saying. I love you. I love you. I love you. What are you going to do about it? Well, God says this. This is the person. This is the character of God. I love you enough that I will sacrifice my son so much. I love you so much that I will give my one and only son. You 
you see his purpose is serious when the ability to give up something to save you like his own son he would sacrifice his own flesh and blood he would sacrifice the one who spoke the worlds into existence he would sacrifice the only son that he would ever when he says only begotten or un and only son the only son he would ever have that's how much God loves you talk is cheap but when somebody says I'll kill my son so you can have eternal life that should mean the world to you and when you're drawing close to God that's one of the factors that brings you in even closer because if somebody says I love you yet there's no action then there's no intimacy but if somebody says I love you and there's action behind that then there's intimacy with the one that the action was pointed towards and then from a distance God might be saying I love you but when you understand you'd kill your son for me then it starts moving you closer to the person of God until the intimacy can be found that you're wanting. you got to see that there's got to be action in order for there to be intimacy. And God has already done His side of the action. God has already came down from heaven. God left the glories of heaven through the person of His Son and came down to a cruel world. Jesus humbled Himself into a position of a servant, a slave, and being found in that humble, lowly position, He gave His life in obedience to the Father's will. And now He has been exalted to the right hand of the Father. God has done all. He said when the Holy Spirit, John chapter 14, Jesus talking about the Holy Spirit, He said He's going to come to convict of sin, righteousness and judgment. Not only has God sent His Son as the sacrifice for all mankind, for all sin but once His Son ascended then He sent the Holy Spirit into the world to make sure that one day when you heard the gospel, the Holy Spirit would shake you and say you need to respond to the one that's talking to you this morning. It ain't the preacher. It's the Spirit of God that shakes the inside of you. They look, look, if you respond to the preacher, that's, that, that ain't far enough. You need to respond to the Spirit of God that's drawing you, that's calling you, that's wooing you, that's bringing you in. God comes from heaven so you can go to heaven. That's His whole purpose that all the world would come to Him. Everyone, verse 16, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. God's not willing. God's not willing. God's saying, here it is. Here's salvation to all mankind. Anyone who will come, you come. God's not willing. That's why 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 9 talks about that God hasn't returned to get His children yet. It says that He is slow concerning His promise. That means He's just holding back. He's saying, I'm coming to get you, but I'm going to wait for as many as will respond to the gospel, and then I'm going to come. And then I'm going to come, he's saying, so that everyone, this is the person of God. This is the purpose, the main overarching theme of all the Scripture is that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He who believes in Him, Jesus, will not perish. It doesn't mean will not just die physical death. You will die a physical death unless you are raptured out. If you die once, you will not die twice with Jesus. Listen to me. If you'll die to self now and receive Christ as your Savior, then you will experience physical death, but you will not experience spiritual death. But if you do not die to self now and receive Christ as Savior, not only will you receive physical death, but you will also receive spiritual death. He's saying, I don't want this to happen. I don't want people to die and go to hell. God is not sitting in heaven with His hands in the air, saying, look at all those people in hell. He is heartbroken. 
He is hurting. He is God and He loves people. He is just. He is righteous. He is the one who is making sure that the right thing is done. People who believe in Christ go to heaven. People who don't go to hell. But it hurts the heart of God for people to go to hell. God loved them enough to kill His Son that He would see them go to a place of glory. Go to a place of goodness. Go to a place where nobody... Now look, look, there's nobody in heaven that wants to come back to earth. I can promise you that. There's nobody in heaven that would say, I'd trade heaven for hell. But everybody in hell would say, let me out of this place. Every single person, including Satan one day, will be begging to get out of that place. Why not stop them before they get there? Why not make sure Look, Charles Spurgeon said that we should lay down our lives, including our physical bodies, that people would have to step over them to plunge head first into hell. I mean, you should do everything in your ability to make sure that people understand the gospel, that people see you living out the gospel, that people make the people... Look, people are going to reject the gospel. People are going to tell you no. People are going to not do what you ask them to do. But that doesn't matter. All that matters is that we are faithful to doing what God's called us to do. The person and the purposes of God. God sent His world, His Son into the world. Verse 17... Not to judge the world. You think about this. God's purpose was not to judge people. God's purpose is to save people. You understand what I'm saying? Now when you think of judging, I don't want to clear that mess up in the world today. You just, it, it, it's, a, it's a very sensitive subject with people. You can't judge me. This is my lifestyle. This is what I like to do. I, I was born like that. You know, you get a million. You can't judge me. That's not what we're talking about here. I, said, I don't judge anybody. The Word of God does. Okay, the Word of God says this is right, this is wrong. That God's the, God is the judge, but His purpose of sending Christ was not to condemn. It wasn't like, well, I'm going to send Christ. That way I've, we've made a sacrifice and I'm going to send them all to hell. He didn't do that in order to get to an end where everybody would burn and go to hell. He didn't send Christ as the perfect sacrifice in order to say, One, you did this, this, and this. You're done, even though I sent Christ. He didn't do it. Christ came in the world to save sinners, Paul said, of whom I am chief. So He didn't come to judge them. He came to forgive them and free them from the judgment that would come if they didn't call upon the name of Jesus. So why everybody thinks this religion that we have is about judgment and people can't do this and people can't do that. It's so much more than the rules of religion that Christianity has been dumbed down to. It is a personal response to a perfect sacrifice that leads you into an intimate salvation with one that wants to love you, not destroy you. He didn't come to judge you. He came to give you life and life more abundant. He came to give you forgiveness of sin. He came to give you a home in heaven. He came to give you everything you need for life and godliness. He didn't come to destroy you. He came to lift you up just as the Son of Man is lifted up. You look at the cross. You look at what Christ did for you. You call upon the name of the Lord. You do what's necessary to be saved. And God says, you are forgiven you are freed and positionally, then you are sitting at the right hand of the Father with Christ Himself. Right now, if you are saved, God sees you in His Son. And as long as the Son is accepted by the Father, so are you. He didn't come to judge you. He came to save. He came to change you. He came to move you out of your mess into the miracle of what He is and who He is. God sent His Son not into the world to condemn it or to judge it, but to save the world through Him. Never, He didn't come. Look, God's not sitting up in heaven going, I can't wait to drop the hammer. You know, like sometimes as parents, you know, we, we can't wait to get them kids. You know what I'm saying? But God ain't doing that. God ain't saying, well, just a few more days and I'm going to get them all. 
God's saying, just a few more days, and I'll have to keep my word. There's a difference. God's not in heaven with a big hammer wanting to kill you. God's saying, look, look, he's saying, they've still got time. He, he's not trying to say, um, you're going to hell, you're going to hell, you're going to hell, you're going to hell, you're going to hell. He's saying, won't you come to heaven? Won't you come to me? Won't, won't, you, won't you be saved? Holy Spirit, move on them. He's, he's a master. He has a, that's why I said the purposes of God have to be known in this master plan. He, he, is, that, he is that painter that paints that, that full painting. And when he starts the brush stroke, you don't even know what the painting's going to be. But you just see all these pieces and these parts start coming together until a, a beautiful picture arises out of what first was just a, a messy looking piece of canvas. That's what God's doing right now. It looks, look, this world looks like a mess. Yes. It looks like the Creator doesn't know what He's doing. I mean, it looks in our human mind like, what in the world is going on with God's taking that brush of glory, the salvation? He's just, he's just painting the, the perfect picture and you're in there. You're in that picture of salvation. And one day it's going to be the perfect fullness. The overarching thing's going to come together. It's going to be the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life as we all gather in the New Jerusalem. Jerusalem, all righteous, all good, all perfect, everything right, glorifying God and the Lamb forever, all evil gone away, and all righteous. But right now, you get to see God's trying to get as many people there as He can. He is not about playing church. You listening to me? Quit inviting people to church and start inviting people to Jesus. Like, Thursday night, inviting people to church is good, but if Friday night they die and go to hell, then Sunday never came. We've got to get serious about this, guys. We've got to get moving on the right track. God's purpose and His person have always been the same. But verse 18, there's no judgment against anyone who believes in Him. But, you need to underline that. But, there is no judgment. You listen, there's no judgment against anyone who believes in Him, but... Anyone who does not believe in Him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. They're condemned already. It's, it's, unless they change their mind and God changes their heart, they're as good as already there. Judge, listen to me. Judgment was made at the cross. Salvation was paid for full and free through the blood of Jesus. But judgment was also made at that point where he says, if you believe, you're good. But if you don't believe, it's no good. That's the purpose of all of this. That's the purpose of church. That's the purpose of the scripture. That's the purpose of worship. That's, the, that's why you're here. You're not here to fulfill your own fleshly desires. You are here to fulfill the will of God for your life. You are here to be light in the darkness. You are here to make sure that everybody knows that you know Jesus and that they can also. You are here to change the world. You're here to be like the disciples and turn the world upside down. I always think about Paul having several missionary journeys. But never having anything but a pair of feet to go on. And here we are. With everything we need. All the money. All the resources. All the vehicles. Planes. Internet. Cell phone. The gospel is more easily given and transmitted in 2018. Than it ever has been in the history of the world. Yet it is the most neglected as it has ever been in the history of the world. Think about that statement. It's easier to tell people about Jesus, yet less people are doing it than they ever have. That's why I want us to align with Christ. Because people need to be saved. All heads bowed and all eyes closed. We have communion on each side of the sanctuary this moment. As...
you are praying right now, I'm asking you to take communion in a worthy manner. It's what the Scripture says. Communion is a very sacred deal. It is the truth of God coming to earth as a man and saving you through the shedding of His blood and the breaking of His body. And I'm asking you right now to spend a little bit of time in prayer and just confessing your sin to God, whether it's known or unknown. But I want you to be right with Him before you take this communion. If there's something you need to work on, maybe it's in the altar. Maybe you need to get on your hands and knees before God and just give Him, give him what He needs. Because He needs all of you. Not some of you. All of you. Mm. Whatever that is, you need to do that right now. So if you need to be saved, to I'm going to be standing right up here, right in the center of this room. Oh, Come to me. We'll make sure you find out who Jesus is. But once you've prayed, you, you, you know you're ready to receive communion in your heart and your mind, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take the cup, the bread, you take it back to your seat. You get in the altar. But I just want you to love on the Lord. God so loved the world. Well, it's time for the world of us, Jesus followers, to love on Him. And just bask in the sacrifice of the Son. God's purpose was to save you. He has saved you. Now your purpose is to serve Him and praise Him for the rest of your natural born life. I'm going to pray. Then you begin to take communion. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for everyone in this room, God. That we will draw close to you. And we will align ourselves with you. That everything in us, God, will come into your alignment, God. That we will fully give ourselves to you in everything, in all places of our lives. That the dark spots will be revealed. That the light will penetrate, God. And that everyone in this room is saved. God, that they've given their heart to you. They've confessed their sin. They've confessed you as their Savior. And they're going to turn from their sin to follow you who wants you. You want them, God. You want them to follow you. That's blessed during this time of communion, this time of altar call. Let everyone, Lord Jesus, experience you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You come. You take communion freely. But in turn and I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, yeah! No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No, 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 no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No, 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 no. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Yeah. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. And oh, it chases me down. Fights till I'm found Leaves the 99 And I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming Never-ending 
reckless love of God yeah. mm. Be saved. Whatever God speaks, the time is now. It chases me down, fight still. I'm found, leaves the nine and nine. And I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless. Love of God is. Mm. When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. And you have been so, so good to me. So God loved the world so much. No Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that we'll never forget those words. Coming after me. For you loved us so much. God, give us the ability just to walk in that. The love of Christ that constrains us, it compels us. And may we show the world who you are, what your purposes are. God, I pray that you bless this time as we hear these announcements, God, as we see what you've got for us in the future may it be full of that which glorifies your name and saves the lost touches the saints God praise you God for the offering that we're going to take up for you I praise you for your blessings I praise you that the, the giver and the gift Lord you've anointed you you've given us people who have a generous heart and a generous spirit Lord Jesus thank you God you're going to keep on doing that Lord Jesus that every day we're going to just give you praise honor and glory building up something that no man could build and for not letting Satan tear it down. God, we worship you. Help us align with you in everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good morning and welcome to Missionary Grove Baptist Church. We're so glad that you all chose to be here and to worship with us today. If you're a first time visitor, please be sure to fill out the MGBC connection card, which is the tear off section of your bulletin. Fill this information out and turn it into the Welcome Center where we have a very special gift waiting for you. Missionary Grove and the Benton County Ministerial Alliance are partnering to host a mobile food pantry on February 3rd, located at the Camden Central High School. This is a great opportunity that is specially funded by a grant through the Second Harvest Food Bank. We will be in need of several volunteers to help setting up, sorting, and distributing food. If this is something that you may be interested in helping with, we would greatly appreciate your volunteerism. And you can see the sign-up sheet that is posted on the back bulletin in the foyer area. For more information, please see Ms. Nikki Dillahay. We would like to announce that the 2017 giving statements are now available. And if you need a copy, you can please see Mr. John Sewell. Okay, outdoorsmen, mark your calendars because February 17th at 7 a.m., Missionary Grove will be hosting their third annual squirrel hunt. You must be able to provide your own firearms, ammunition, and licenses, and if you're under the age of 16, you must be accompanied by a parent or guardian. After the squirrel hunt, you all will meet back here at Missionary Grove at 10 a.m. for a very big home-cooked breakfast. We are in need of volunteers to help prepare and serve this breakfast. We will have sign-up sheets posted on the back bulletin for both the Squirrel Hut participants and volunteers to cook the breakfast. For more information, you can see Mr. Danny Barham. It's almost time for our annual Valentine's Banquet, and this banquet is for all adults, both couples and singles, so don't miss out on the fun. It will be held on February 16th at 6 p.m., located at the Apex Bank of Camden Community Room. Our menu will consist of roast beef or Alice Springs chicken. We will also be providing child care services right here at Missionary Grove and the cost will be $5 per child. The children will have lots of fun with pizza, movies, crafts, and more. We are very excited about this year's Valentine's Banquet and we hope to see you all there. Please see the sign-up sheets for both the banquet and child care services that we have posted on the back bulletin in the foyer area. Thank you all again for being here with us today at Missionary Grove. We hope you join us again next week. And please remember to share hope through the love of Jesus. God bless. Amen. Let's stand up and be dismissed in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings, God. We pray that your love constrains us and compels us, Lord. That it just wells up inside of us, God. And that we draw closer to you through it. Help us love you more every day. Help us love everyone around us. God bless this church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn it up.